When we all get together, we can go from good to better. We will always sing it louder, cause in us there is a power and we are, we are, we are Koa. We are, we are, we are Koa. Never fading, never going away. We are full of joyous wonder. Opportunities, a thousand possibilities. The Koa Academy, as strong as a Koa tree. We're young and we are free. We're so glad that we can be Koa Academy. We are, we are, we are Koa. We are. All right, good evening, everyone. I hope that you are all doing well. Um, it looks like we have a pretty good representation to get started, at least. Um, I hope you're enjoying our school song as much as I was. I see some people are still coming in um, as we go, so I'll just keep admitting them um, over the next few minutes. And of course, we are recording this for everybody who couldn't make it. I think our parents have worked out very quickly that all of these are recorded. <laughs> so we just, we share the link afterwards and uh, you can enjoy your supper and then watch the recording on double speed. Um, I do try and talk fast enough that if you try and play my voice on double speed, it's a little bit too fast to be comfortable, um, which 1.5 is probably the optimum speed for me. Um, but thank you so much for making some time to join me. I hope you've got your cup of tea ready. And uh, we're just going to spend the next 40 minutes together or so uh, chatting a little bit about the life of COA and what's happening at COA and uh, look back a little bit on this term uh, and where we've been so far, and then look ahead to next term, uh, what's coming up for us as well as 2023. Uh, we've got some really exciting th things coming up in store for us um, as a school, and uh, we're excited to sh share some of that with you tonight. Uh, but let's get right into it. I'm, I'm gonna do a bit of a presentation. Um, if anybody does have questions, would love to chat to you guys um, after the session tonight. So feel free to, to stick around. And I'll make sure that uh, we have some time at the end to, to connect um, and you can ask some questions um, and engage a little bit. We really want to maximize these opportunities um, as a school uh, to be able to, to connect with each other and engage. I am going to be sharing my screen, uh, so it's not uh, super necessary to have your camera on, but we do love cameras on at COA. So if you would like to pop your camera on so that we can see all of your lovely faces, you're very welcome to do so, uh, but absolutely no pressure. I know some of us are probably cooking at the moment um, in our kitchens or um, busy with the kids. So uh, feel free to make yourselves comfortable. Uh, but it's nice to see those of you who I can see. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen now. Okay. Here it comes. All right, that should be up on your screens now. Um, as I said, I just want to take a moment just to, to walk through. Some of this will be familiar to those of us who, who've been around for a while. Um, I see the, the frows, hi frows. Um, so some of this will be familiar to you guys and others. Some of this, uh, particularly uh, for our, our newer parents, might be fresh, uh, but I'm hoping that there'll be lots in this as well that's, that's new for everyone and exciting for everyone. And also just some really helpful practical information especially going into the fourth term, uh, which is quite an important term for, for a lot of us who are particularly looking at grade progression for next year. Um, so, I mean, as you know, we're on a mission here at COA. We want to make sure that we are the most engaging online school in South Africa slash the world. Um, we really do want to set the standard for engagement uh, when it comes to online learning. Um, and what we have found is that that idea of engagement is so key 
in the online space. Um, and, and if we're not doing it well, if we're doing what we call school on a screen and just taking traditional school models as uh, school rhythms and structures and simply presenting them on a screen, we get this disconnect and you start hearing the language of disconnect. Um, uh, that's not what we're after. We're after this high engagement environment. And so you've all experienced our pods of eight, which is our way of making sure that we're staying well connected to each other. And we hear that language coming back at us all the time. When we talk to parents, when we talk to kids in COA, we're hearing the language of the pods coming back. We're hearing the language of engagement and it's really um, making us happy. Um, so that's what we're all about. And that's what we're going to continue to be all about. Uh, we are the only online school doing pods. Um, and the, the predominant form of our online sessions is through pods of eight. Um, and that will always be the case. Sometimes I get asked the question by parents, especially new parents, is pods always the plan or is just is this just as you're small and looking to to grow? And and the answer is no, this is this is the forever plan for COA. We always want to be a high engagement school. And even though it's counterintuitive, maybe from uh, uh, an economic scaling perspective or a big business perspective, actually for us as, an, as a school, this makes no sense. We want to be highly engaging. We want to be highly accountable. And so this is always going to be the priority for us. Um, and we've loved it. We've loved getting to know uh, your kids and, and you. And the more we get to know them in these pods, the more we spend time with them, the more we are enjoying this process. And I keep saying to people, you know, people ask me all the time, don't you miss uh, the, the physical schooling space? And, and I say, um, yeah, no, I mean, there are elements of the physical schooling world that I, that I do miss. But to be honest, I'm feeling more engaged and connected with the people in my school than I was ever before. I, I know these kids well. I know their names. I know their likes and their dislikes. And I mean, to be fair, as the school's starting to grow, I'm starting to struggle to connect with everybody meaningfully. But what's nice is that our scaling of the pods means that everybody is known and everybody is heard. Um, and it might not necessarily be just by me, but it's certainly by those who they're meeting with regularly in their pods and their pod teachers and their subject teachers. And that high engagement is so important and, and we're loving that process. And, and when I do spend time with the teachers and they talk about the kids, it's obvious to me, they know these kids, they know your kids, they know their strengths and their challenges, their likes and their dislikes. And, uh, you know, when to encourage and, and when to, uh, you know, <laughs> I don't want to use the word threaten, <laughs> but when to like really eke out the best and, and when to like just appreciate and enjoy. And, and I love that about our environments at the school. Um, just a reminder, obviously, you're being registered and accredited with the IEB. Uh, that's the ecosystem that we live in. Um, and, and we are thoroughly enjoying our relationship with the IEB. Um, this is pro probably a, a part of the life of the school that goes unseen by you as parents, largely. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of insight into how much we're enjoying being a part of the IEB. Um, we are enjoying the flexibility. We are enjoying the academic robustness. And it seems like that combination of flexible and robust, which you'll remember is how COA got its name, the COA wood being strong and flexible, they, they re reflect that as well. They talk about high standards academically. And at the same time, there's a great deal of flexibility in how we go about doing our teaching and learning. And we're, we're loving that relationship. And um, some of you will have recently seen, we did a, a COA cast, which is a, a monthly podcast that we do. It's also, we put, put out a video uh, once a month. And our very first one with, was with Anne Oberholzer, the CEO of the IED. And we spoke all about assessments and, you know, are we over testing kids? And, you know, why is the IED different to the DBE? Um, and all those sorts of conversations and questions. And I went away from that being chuffed that we're a part of the IED and belong to the IEB family. So um, we're more confident than ever that this is the right accreditation for us. And most excitingly, we are really looking forward to tapping into the ISC, which is a new arm of the IEB, which is their international arm. So for those of you who are not in South Africa right now, um, I can see the Olsons in the call. Hi, guys. And um, for those of you who are not in South Africa right now, this is exciting news for the future is that we are actively in conversations with the IEB about rolling out the ISC, which is their international um, accredited certification for high school. Um, and hopefully that's something in the very near future that we'll be able to announce. Um, but that's great. In terms of our COA footprint, uh, we're seeing fantastic growth and the growth just carries on. 
Um, we are currently, by my last count, um, in, we're in all nine provinces of South Africa, I think have been since about March. Um, but we're also now in nine countries. Um, most of them are Southern Africa. Um, I know that we've got Mozambique, Botswana, Madagascar, Lesotho, Swaziland. Uh, we're East Africa now, uh, Kenya, um, a small handful in London, and then even a family in Thailand, which has been an awesome experience for us. Um, to be able to work to work with somebody who's five hours apart is is been a unique challenge, and we've loved it. It's worked, um, so we're enjoying that process. And and maybe just to say, we're really excited about the East Africa growth, and that's probably our our target for the next three years or so is focusing on East Africa becoming a real hub for us as well. So excited about that. As we grow as a school, our staff obviously has to grow. Um, I couldn't fit everyone on the screens. Uh, if you're a teacher on the call and you're not on the screen and you're thinking, what about me? I'm so sorry. I couldn't fit everyone on, but this is uh, the majority of our staff at the moment. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, I can't believe the, the quality of staff that we have at COA. People join our team and they often say to me, where did you find all these people? Um, and I say, I, I, honestly, it's it's just been like every single person that's joined us has been just handpicked for COA. And we're so thrilled with the, the quality of, of educators and administrative staff and leadership uh, that we have on board at COA. Um, and I'll mention one or two of them uh, going forward, but I really just wanted to honor all of them and say, I've never, I personally, I've never worked on a staff that is so forward thinking and, and excited about what's happening. Um, in our school. So you might recognize one or two of these faces, but I just wanted you to get a sense of, of the staff and to say we're, we're currently in the process of scaling up for next year. I uh, spent most of the day today in interviews and again, just can't believe the sorts of people that we are getting to work with and get to work with in the future. So um, looking forward to introducing some new faces to you. In terms of our academics, I wanted to walk you through a, a few things. Uh, this is mostly looking back at this last term and just touch on a few highlights. Um, firstly, our, our academics in the grade four to nines, what we call the in phase. Um, this is where our, our, our pod teaching is done, where a pod teacher is responsible for a pod and the pod teacher is responsible for the academic progress across all subjects. So if you're a pod teacher, then you're responsible for one child in a pod of eight and you're responsible for their progress across all of their subjects. Um, and then on top of that, we have a layer of subject specialists, particularly in the languages and in maths, and they oversee the language and maths offerings across all the grades in grades four to nine. And you know the four main arms of that, which are connect, build, engage, and rich. And just a quick reminder, especially for our new pa parents, connect is all about pod connect in the morning, high socialization, um, learning to socialize online in a healthy way, building connections and relationships. It's also about soft skills. So we're learning key soft skills, 21st century skills. That's the moment that we're really honing the sorts of skills that workplaces hire for. Can I tell you, uh, sitting in interviews today, I am not hiring hard skills. I'm hiring soft skills. That's what we do. Um, and, and it's what workplaces do. Those of you who, who sit in, uh, in, in interviews and, and you're on the side of the table that's doing the hiring, you'll know. You're concerned with the caliber of person and how they interact with others. You're concerned with how they can think critically and, and analyze information. Um, those are the sorts of, of things that you're looking at um, in, a, in a potential employee. And so our Pod Connect is working on that and it's working on it indirectly. You know, those are not skills that you teach directly. They're skills that you teach indirectly. And so as we're sitting in those Pod Connect sessions and we're playing fun games, the kids are super immersed. And I mean, sometimes Pod Connect runs over just because we're having so much fun. You know, you don't say that often about an academic lesson, unless you were in one of my chemistry classes back in the day. Kidding. <laughs> or one of Jason's history classes. There you go, Jason. I see you. All right. But honestly, these Pod Connect sessions are so fun. And at the same time, we're learning these soft skills. And so we're, we're targeting them indirectly through the things that we're doing there and, and we're loving that. Build is the next part of the day. We focus on maths and languages as core competencies and we want to build strong core competencies. And so we're always refining that process. I'll talk about that in a moment. Then we've got engage, which are our engage tasks. Also, I'll mention those briefly in a moment. And finally, enrich, uh, where we are 
uh, developing individual uh, uh, passions and interests. And uh, just some insight, this is one of the things that at the moment, as we pivoted to having more pods, we are always refining our systems and this enrich one, we're revisiting how we offer our enrichment platforms and programs, because that's one of the things that's become more challenging as we grow to be able to personalize and individualize on such a one-on-one a -on -one level. Uh, we're currently revisiting how we do that because we want to make sure that we're maximizing the opportunity for your child to do things that leans into their strengths and that they're passionate about. A couple of things to mention there under the four to nines. A uh, uh, big welcome to Water. Water, give us a wave. For those of you who can see Water on your screen, there's Water. Um, Water has joined us as our head of academics in grade four to nine. Uh, so uh, Jason started as our head of academics in uh, January for the 10 to 12s, and Water has joined the team in the four to nines this term and um, has blown us away with, with upping our level in terms of robustness in, in the academics. Um, and so we're so delighted to have her on board. She comes with heaps of experience um, leading teams and, and working with academic staff. Um, she's also launched a, a group of teachers called the Academic Based Support Team or the ABS Team, for those of you who, who like a good acronym. Um, and our ABS Team are working hard to make sure that our academic offering reaches everybody who it needs to reach. So our academic based support team meet frequently to talk about learners and interventions and look into remedial options for the younger children. Uh, and again, that's really given us um, a support in an area that we didn't have before. And finally, I, I did a quick count before I joined the, the meeting tonight. And I can tell you that we now have over 240 complete and published COA courses. Uh, and, and it's just a phenomenal number of of courses that have been published across grade four to nine. And these are, you know, they range anything from a three hour course up to a whole term long course. Um, and, and the number is now sitting on 240 of those. And, and we've really seen some really quality material coming out of um, a lot of our staff. In our grade 10 to 12 offering, uh, we've uh, uh, had two terms now of our current model, which we are enjoying, which is a combination of coursework, masterclasses and workshops. So those of you who are parents in the 10 to 12s will know this, but if you're in grade eight or nine as a parent and you're wondering what 10 to 12 looks like, um, this is the model as it stands. We've got a series of underlying courses which deliver all of the course content to the learners at their own pace. Um, and they're able to work through that course content and track their progress across a whole term at their own pace. Um, and, and they're really enjoying that, having the freedom and flexibility to be able to work through their, their coursework. Um, I was having a conversation with a young man the other day in grade 10, and I said to him, what are you enjoying about COA? And he said to me, I'm, I'm loving this coursework because I'm strong at business studies. Oh, by the way, we were about six weeks into term. He said, I'm strong at business studies. And so I've actually finished my business studies course for the term. And now I get to focus for the next four weeks on Afrikaans because that's where I struggle. And I wouldn't have known how to do that if I was following the teacher's rhythms and the teacher's timing. So we've already seen the, the benefits on the individual level of having this coursework that the kids can access at their own pace. On top of that, we have the layer of uh, uh, subject specialist support. And this is not infrequent, you know, the, the as and when you need it, which actually ends up being hardly ever. This is regular built in uh, daily, the kids are having a masterclass in a subject and a workshop in a subject. Masterclasses are with their grade where their teacher is doing slightly more traditional lecture style. Let's cover important concepts together. Let me help set your pace in your coursework. Your workshops are back to your pods of eight or your groups of eight in your subjects. And those are round table conversations. They're workshopping difficult concepts. Uh, the teacher is asking them questions, gauging where each learner is at in terms of their academic progress and giving them an opportunity to, to ask questions on the material that they're stuck in their coursework. So those workshops, if you were to ask me which part of that is the, is the real heart of academic support, it's the workshops. Uh, this term in particular, we've seen a real increase in the coursework completion rate, which we're really excited about. And it shows that we're moving in the right direction in terms of holding learners accountable to that underlying coursework. One of the things that we know is a real challenge in the online space, if you make it individualized and let learners work at their own pace, is making sure that there's accountability, that you're not working too slow or working on the wrong material um, or getting stuck and nobody knows it. 
And so one of the things that we're really interested in is this coursework completion rates. Are learners successfully making it through their courses and in the right time? And we've we've had a big jump up this term in our coursework completion rate. Um, and I think that's largely because some of the mechanisms that we've put in place, both through our, our subject teachers, but also through our dashboard, uh, launching our, our progress charts on our dashboard. And then lastly, with the grade 10 to 12s, we've also seen a significant rise in aggregate mark across the subjects from the beginning of the year. Um, this is quite hard to measure, uh, and we're also very hesitant to compare our grades to other schools, just because schools work so differently. But when we do compare what learners came into COA with in terms of average marks across subjects with where they are now, by my last count, it was around about a 5% increase across all learners across all subjects, which uh, the more data you have coming in, the more reliable your data is. And so we, we don't want to, to read too much into that, but we are pleased that early indications are uh, the way that we're, we're doing our work, especially with the smaller groups, seems to be having a positive impact on our ac academics in those grades. We did some parent feedback fairly recently, and um, I know that I gave you some of this uh, back in, in an email, uh, but I just wanted to touch on this again and just give you a little bit of an update in, in where we've gone since then. Uh, we asked the parents a bunch of questions about how they were experiencing COA and, and got some lovely feedback. We asked two questions of the parents. We didn't phrase it quite like this, but we wanted to know what do you like about COA and what do you wonder? What would you do differently? What are you finding challenging at COA? We're always wanting to get this sort of feedback so that we can grow and improve. And these, I've picked these uh, phrases out as uh, the most common phrases. So these are not just hand-picked flash-in-the-pan comments. These are the most regular comments that we saw. So each of these was probably reflected, you know, in 20% of all the comments. Um, and so the things that people are saying regularly that they like, that phrase, less anxious. This is particularly true for our grade four to nines. Our grade four to nine parents say to me after the first few weeks, my child is less anxious. If if I had a million bucks for every time a parent said that to me, we'd all be going on holiday overseas uh, together because it has been amazing how often I've heard that phrase. My child is less anxious. Um, they're less stressed. We're still getting the same test cycles and the same academic feedback, but there's less anxiety around how it's delivered. Um, the second thing is my child's more confident. Um, uh, they, they seem, uh, you know, I, I was speaking to a parent today at one of our, our um, educational outings, and the parent said to me, I walk past my child's room, and my husband says to me, is that our daughter? <laughs> is that our daughter in there? Is that her talking like that? And, you know, like just blown away with the confidence levels increasing and particularly when it comes to confidence interacting with others. And I think the kids feel safe uh, to be able to share. And I think it's a combination of two things. Having spoken to the kids informally, it seems like firstly, the small pods create a highly accountable, safe space for them to be able to be themselves. But secondly, um, kids engage online very comfortably and naturally. Um, it just feels intuitive to them, to their, to their generation. The third thing there is my child's more independent. I think I've mentioned that on the previous slide, you know, talking about uh, I get to work through the material at my own pace, but I can see my progress. It's in front of me. Uh, part of our learner orientation is we tell the kids when they join COA, we have three values. And if you want to know whether you'll be successful at COA, ask yourself, will I be able to do these three things? And it's we engage, we show up, we track. We engage is I communicate and I communicate early and often. And we show up as I always turn up on time with my camera on. Um, and thirdly, the most important one here is we track. We teach the kids, it's not just the teacher's job to track your academic progress, they will. It's not just your parents' job to track your academic progress, they will. It's also your job to track your academic progress. You need to know from a grade four child to a grade 12 child, you need to know how you're performing in each subject every single day, how much progress I've made, what I need to work on next, what my daily rhythm looks like, how I access support and help when I need it. All of those sorts of mechanisms that are teaching kids independence and executive functioning, which frankly, we move away from in traditional schooling and we teach kids that we will be responsible for those things and we'll tell you what to do and when to do it. Um, but we love the sense that kids are becoming more independent. 
that the flexibility one is obvious. This is something that's just inherently part of online schooling. We love the flexibility. And finally, the small pods uh, comes out very strongly in that, that individual attention. The things that parents are saying, I wonder, I wonder if we could do something different. So this is what I find challenging. This is what I'm finding a bit of a sticking point for me at the moment. These are the three most common that, that we had in that, in that feedback survey. The first was my child, this was particularly true for the grade four to nines. My child needs more time with the subject teacher. The pod teaching is great. The underlying coursework is great. The engaged tasks are great. But actually, there are moments where my child needs more academic teaching from a subject teacher live in the moment. And so we've done two things there. The first is this term we've brought on two more subject specialists. Uh, we had Sherman A come and join us in the Afrikaans, and we had Eloise come and join us in the English. And they've blown us away already with what they've done there. I'm so excited to share some of their new coursework with you. They're busy working on term one, 2023. That's how far in advance these guys are planning and thinking. And I've seen some of that term one material and I'm so excited for our kids to do it. They've taken good courses and made them great. And at the same time, the second thing we've done is we've started running more frequent masterclasses for our younger kids. And so our kids have gone from having zero masterclasses and only being able to book teacher time to having at least one masterclass a week and for the older kids at least two masterclasses per week where they're getting together in a group with kids from other pods so they're having that cross pollination of pods and they're having their subject teacher come in we have subject teachers come in and do lessons on a range of subjects we focus on maths english afrikaans isiZulu, but we also bring in subject teachers to do history i know that we've had jason come down and do a, a history masterclass in our younger grades um, I know that we've had Simone come and do a life sciences masterclass in our younger grades. Um, we also have a lot of our pod teachers doing life skills masterclasses. Um, we had Kate the other day run a first aid course in one of our masterclasses. So that's a wonderful opportunity to have engagement and also with other faces. We want our kids, particularly as they get a bit older, to see more faces during the day and to interact with different teachers during the day. And so that's provided a mechanism for that as well. We are always on the lookout for how to, to strengthen our, our subject teaching in the younger grades. And so we'll keep working on that next term as well. The second comment is um, we need we need Isuzulu. This, <laughs> this is one of the most frequent things that we heard in the first term in particular. And so we actioned this a lot quicker than we were initially planning. We were initially looking at 2023 for an Isuzulu uh, launch. And this was just such a desperate need in our school, but in, in general, that we we just jumped the gun and hired as an Isuzulu teacher. And uh, Ngepi Ngobo joined us uh, at the beginning of this term, or even earlier, I think a little bit before, a little bit before, and has been phenomenal uh, on the team so far. She is focusing on the FET phase, so she's focusing on grade 10 to 12, but she loves Isuzulu so much and has been such a, a, a wonderful uh, boost to our staff that we've we said well why don't you just do eight and nine as well okay well why don't you do seven and now she's doing six as well so we, we can't get enough of Ngepi she's now doing six to eleven and just today I'm happy to report we uh, signed a contract with another uh, uh, teacher who's coming on to support us in grade four five six Isuzulu starting in January 2023 so starting from January we're going to have Isuzulu from grade four to grade eleven um, and then, oh, just to mention with the Isuzulu, one thing that is going to lag behind uh, is our underlying coursework. So while our Isuzulu teachers are teaching, they're going to do more live sessions. And while, they, while they're teaching their live sessions, they're going to be working in advance on that underlying coursework. We're going to roll out our underlying coursework for grade 10 to 12 in January. And our underlying coursework for the younger grades will probably roll out more like middle of next year. But until then, our Isuzulu teachers will be teaching their lessons live a little bit more traditionally. Next up, uh, the, this last one, it's, it's one that we've probably focused on the most over the last month, which is more social days. I, I just used that phrase, the idea of social connection. Uh, parents are saying to us, it's obvious that we're doing an awesome job with the online socialization. Uh, we're meeting those needs. Uh, what parents are asking for is more support with the in-person socialization. And so we're thinking hard and working hard towards this. One of the things that we're doing is we're rethinking how we communicate with our parents around what healthy socialization looks like for an online school and how much responsibility falls on the school 
and how much responsibility falls on the parents. And one of the things that we're talking to with the parents is we need to rethink what schooling is about when we join an online school. And as we rethink of it, the best way to reimagine the type of schooling that you're leveraging here is we're no longer bundling our education, we're unbundling our education. Okay, so the, the analogy here is a bundled technology is DSTV. Uh, you're going to pay a, a monthly fee and it's your one-stop shop and you're going to gain access to the history channel, the series channels, the movie channels, the sports channels, and all the news channels, all sorts of other weird and wonderful channels in between. You've got 900 channels to choose from. You're probably going to watch three of them. You're going to pay for all of them, but you'll pay less than if you're paying for all 900 of them separately. And in the early stages of any technology or any industry, bundling makes sense. It makes sense economically and it gives you as the parents or as the consumer the most access for the least resource spent. As technology and opportunities grow and evolve, what almost always happens is that they unbundle there comes a tipping point where it no longer makes sense to pay for all of DSTV because you realize I'm only watching a few of those. And as technology gets better, we realize actually it's cheaper for me to have a Netflix account and a Sky Sports account because those are the only two things that I ever watch. It's actually cheaper for me and I get to be very selective in what I choose. I don't just have to choose from the menu. And so what we're finding in education is that we're at that tipping point now. In the evolution of education, we're now in the space where we're seeing education unbundling and we're seeing it in the form of online schooling being a very powerful way for you to leverage a high quality academic education for your child at a much lower cost than if you were going to a private school. And you get to then leverage other opportunities in your area outside of the school which add up to less than what it would cost to go to a one-stop shop school. And instead of just being asked to pick between rugby and cricket, you get to look at your child and say, what does my child love? What, what, what are their strengths? What are their interests? What are their passions? Which way do they lean? And, and let me find opportunities in my area which lean into that. And so we've got uh, a, a young man at the moment who's in Europe um, racing downhill mountain biking. Um, I know that we've got a, a bunch of equestrian addicts um, in our community who are loving their horse riding. Um, we've got uh, the one of the top three SA bouldering champs uh, in our in our school. We, we've got a wonderful array of sporting, cultural, dance, musical abilities and passions, and parents are starting to leverage opportunities for their kids outside of COA. And what we are messaging more and more to parents is that's actually our intention. We're not just going to say, look, we, we, you know, we can't help you in that. We want to partner with you in that. But actually, a lot of the intentionality is now the parent's responsibility to leverage those opportunities. The opportunities are there. The difficult part for the parents is being more intentional about those opportunities. And one of the mistakes that we can make going into that shift from bundled world into unbundled world is we still expect the bundled experience. And if we still expect the bundled experience, we may be disappointed in the end. And what we're hoping to help parents with going forward is helping them to understand how do I leverage unbundled opportunities for my parents? And we're seeing some parents doing it very effectively. Um, and so when we see parents leveraging those opportunities for their children outside of COA, uh, firstly, it's it's more economical for them, but but more importantly for us on the social element, your social circles actually grow, because if I'm tapping into multiple opportunities for my child, I actually end up exposing them to wider social circles than just my school can offer. When I send my child to school, it is almost immediate socialization. Your child has no choice because they're in a classroom, they're in a, a the the drama class, then they're they're out on the sports field but they're with the same group of kids in all of those spheres. When you're leveraging specific opportunities for your child in your area, you're actually growing their social circles outside just the, the circles of, of COA. That said, we are actively wanting to work towards creating in-person opportunities for COA kids with other COA kids. And we're seeing this grow. It's challenging for a small school to be able to find these opportunities and really leverage them. 
But as we're growing, we're seeing more and more of these opportunities and we're getting excited about this. And so we've got faith uh, on, on our team who is constantly scratching her head about what's our next uh, engagement going to be? What's our next COA social event? And so she's come up with some wonderful ideas that she's already trialed. Today, I mentioned we went on our first educational outings. Um, I was at the uh, Natural History Museum uh, here in Cape Town and loved it. I know that in Gauteng, they went to a croc farm and had a tour around the croc farm, uh, which looked really cool. I saw the pictures. Whoa, snakes around the necks and picking up crocs and all sorts of things. I'm glad I went to the museum. I'm just saying the kids may have thought they got a raw deal with me at the museum, but I was much happier at the museum. Um, but anyway, we're having a fantastic time with some of those. And as we're growing, we're seeing more and more local communities of COA people getting together. And so we're seeing COA parents meeting up at those and then saying, hey, why don't, why don't we do some work dates where you know, my kids will come around to your house and they'll work at your house for a morning and then you send them around to my house and they'll work at my house for a morning. And we're starting to see these COA clusters. We call them COA hubs. We're seeing these COA hubs forming and it's really been beneficial for our parents. So we're actively working towards helping you to form those. We've got a few things that we're trying at the moment, like these educational outings, our once a term social events. We're really wanting to think about how to get parents engaging with each other in meaningful ways. Uh, that, that's comfortable and natural for you to connect with other parents. We're busy working on a geo mapping where we can actually see a physical map of where all of the COA families are across South Africa and beyond so that we can start letting you know, hey, Esmeralda, did you know that there are actually four families within five minutes drive of you? Would you like to be a part of a group where you can chat with them? <laughs> Esmeralda says, yes, please. Okay. And so we're, we're constantly working on that. And if you have any thoughts around how you'd like to connect with others from COA, please won't you let us know. Um, if you can think of a win for your area or for your community, um, let us know and we'd, we'd love to partner with you in setting those up. Looking ahead, where are we going? Well, we've got term four coming up, everybody. And term four is quite a big term for us. We've got our grade progression and tests for the majority of our learners. This is not all of our learners. Uh, there, there are a handful of, of our learners who are um, are only going to go through grade progression at some point next year. We currently have some learners who are still on a September annual start, uh, which means that their grade progression will only happen in June, July next year. And so we do have the flexibility to manage that, but the bulk of our learners, especially following the South African rhythms, are going to be going through grade progression at the end of this year. And it is a Department of Education requirement that we go through a round of progression tests. So I wanna walk you through those briefly. For our grade four to nines, if you're a grade four to nine parent, the way the progression tests work, we will write one progression test for each subject area. So for our grades four to six, that is six subject areas. And for our grade seven to nine, that's nine subject areas. There'll be one test in each of those subject areas. The tests will take the form of a lot of the assessments that they have already been built into their online courses. So it'll take the form of a digital online assessment which they're going to complete and fill in much like they would any task or assessment that's built into one of their courses. The difference here is that we do them at the same time. So it's a standardized time. So everybody is writing the same science test at the same time, and we do it all together online in a session like this. Um, again, that's a Department of Education requirement. And so we put that in place and we monitor that. Parents ask all the time, do I need to invigilate those sessions? The answer is no. Uh, we, we proctor those exams online. Leading up to each of those tests, uh, we have a, a preparation course. We do not, in grade four to nine, we do not do test weeks. So there isn't a test week where the kids get overwhelmed and stressed for a whole week and write test after test after test. Uh, what we do instead is we set aside time in the whole term. We scatter our tests across the term and leading up to each test, uh, the kids do uh, an underlying course which prepares them for it. So on a th we generally do our tests on Wednesdays. So on a Thursday, we'll release a course that says, let's get ready for geo. You're going to write your geo test next Wednesday. And it walks them through, this is what's going to be in the test. These are some of the engaged tasks that you can go and find helpful information to prepare for it. Here are some questions that you might find in the test. Do you want to do a quick practice? And then once the kids have finished that course the following Wednesday, they'll then all meet together online and do their geography test. 
And the following day, we'd release a course online that says, right, now let's get ready for EMS. And we work through them one at a time. At the same time, just to help provide a little bit of normality through the process, we carry on with a lot of our other uh, systems. So our English, our Afrikaans, our maths, all run as usual, our Engage runs as usual, our assembly rhythms, our pod connect, that all runs as usual. Um, and so their rhythms aren't disrupted. And the kids are preparing for those tests during their um, engaged time. And so we have fewer engaged tasks in term four for them to complete. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't know if you can hear my kids upstairs. End of year awards. This is something we're really excited about as well. Uh, we, we spoke to the kids today, this morning, actually, about high moments in COA. Um, one of the things that we are looking forward to building in, starting with next term, are high moments where we get together as a COA community and we say to the kids, this is a high moment, everybody dress up nice. I even told the kids this morning, I might wear a tie. That's how big this is. And we're gonna to get together in an online session and we're gonna invite your parents in and invite your family and friends in and we're going to do an award ceremony. And this award ceremony will honor important aspects of the life of COA. And so I gave them a demonstration this morning and I actually read out the names of all of the learners who've managed to achieve 90% uh, target completion this term. And I explained to them, this is something that every single child can achieve. It doesn't matter who you are, your targets are set specifically for you by your teacher, and you can achieve 90% of your targets. And so we were able to read out this honors list of everybody who'd achieved 90% of their targets, not achieved 90% in the subject, there were names on that list to all over the map in terms of academic performance, but the point is they were reaching their personal targets. And that's one of the things that I love about that sort of presentation, particularly in the younger grades. We're honoring the values that make most sense to us. As we get a little bit older into the grade 10, 11, and 12, we will have academic achievements that are honored and we'll build in things like academic colors for reaching certain standards in certain subjects. And so we're really excited about our end of year awards and that's, we'll publish the date for that, but that'll run uh, towards the end of next term. And then we've got a community hours partnership. Just want to man mention that for next term. This is specifically for our grade 10s, 12s, uh, and we'll be enrolling your grade 10 and 11 learners in uh, a, a program called community hours. We'll be sharing that information with you next term and we're actually paying for them to be a part of the community hours program. Um, if you are in grade eight or nine and would like to leverage this opportunity for your child, if community service is an important thing for you as a family, I'd like you to know that we are going to be a part of this program called Community Hours. And they are basically a, a platform that helps to pair children with community service opportunities in their area and online. And then they monitor and feedback hours spent in this community service. And then they publish certificates confirming that your child has completed a certain number of community hours. Uh, those uh, uh, certificates can be used for school, they can be used on the child's CV, applications for things like the President's Award, um, and they're, they're a certified company that, that deal with that. If you're in grade eight or nine and you'd like your child to be a part of that, what we're saying is we're paying a fee as a school to sign up with community hours. You can then pay as a family, as an individual, to then leverage that opportunity for your grade eight to nine child will be paying for the for the grade 10 and 11 kids as part of their life orientation program. 2023 is just around the corner. That's pretty scary and exciting. And we're gonna we're, we're really looking forward to the growth in 2023 and are already starting to to plan and take shape for that. It's going to be our first metric class. Everybody is going in 2023 and uh, Jason's already doing a happy dance because we are very excited to get our, our first metric class um, into their examination venues. So we're working hard towards that. Um, next up, we want more social events and interparent comms. I've spoken about that quite a bit already. Um, we'll be going down Isizulu down to grade four. Mentioned that. Uh, sports and cultural partnerships. This, this forms part of our desire to help you leverage the benefits of being unbundled in your education. And so faith, the same faith who is helping us to connect socially and do these educational outings and all sorts of wonderful things. She's also reaching out to literally dozens of uh, sports clubs, culture clubs, dance studios, jujitsu clubs, you name it, she's on it. 
and she is reaching out to them and saying, we'd like to partner with you in being able to offer your services to our parents as an opportunity for them in their area and negotiating discounts on your behalf. So this is something that COA does not pay for as part of our academic offering because it's not academic, but even though we can't do sports and culture particularly well in the online space, we are wanting to help that help make that as easy as possible for you. So keep an eye out in January for a, a list of opportunities in your area with discounts. And if you know of an awesome one in your neighborhood, let's say your child already plays golf for that club, and you'd like us to talk to them about becoming a co-partner for two reasons. Firstly, they may offer us a discount. Not all do, but some do. And secondly, it may spark or encourage other co-parents in your area to come and join you there. And we'll find out, hey, we've got two co kids going to the same club. Let's let each other know. And then let us know if there's a particular opportunity in your area that you'd like us to tap into. You can message Faith or you can message myself or Tegan if you're in contact with Tegan. We'll also be doing a learner leadership program. Uh, this is something that uh, we really want to build in formally, particularly for our older uh, classes. So we'll be uh, launching a formal leadership program for our, for our older kids, and that'll be taking shape, uh, learner leaders. Uh, next up, school traditions. Uh, we've had some wonderful com conversations as a staff about what are some of the more traditional school things that we can do in the online space, which actually do make sense in the online space and will be an awesome experience for our kids. So we're already uh, with the designer on matric jackets. Uh, you know, we're going to be shipping matric jackets to our matrics. So they've got their COA matric hoodie. Uh, we've got some other merch on the way. Uh, we've got school camps that we're, we're dreaming up. Uh, let's go to the Orange River and do some Orange River rafting. Uh, is anybody in? <coughs> I hope so. I'll be there. Come and join me. So we're really wanting to build in some of those uh, school traditions. Um, uh, end of year dinners, uh, matric uh, uh, dinner, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, dashboard updates. Our IT department is working tirelessly to, to upgrade our dashboards for next year as well, make those a little bit more streamlined. And our focus there, just so that you know, is the parent. Our focus for our dashboard updates in this next round is making them more accessible and readable and uh, 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 remindable, if that's a word, for the parents. Uh, what we find is that our kids and our teachers are, are very comfortable and can access their dashboard fairly easily. And they've got them bookmarked on their computer and the teachers are always asking them to pull it up. But for the parents, it's, you have to be quite intentional about going to your child's dashboard. And we're wanting to make that pro process a little bit easier for you. So our IT department's looking into that and looking at updates on the actual dashboards themselves to give you a little bit more insight into things like um, our grade four to nine parents want more insights in terms of attendance of live lessons. And so we'll be putting that information and more onto your child's dashboard. And then finally, I wanna remind you of our referral incentive. This is something that we take every opportunity to remind our parents about because it's a big win for you and us. And the idea is if you refer COA to another family and that family on their application form say that they heard about COA from you, we then, once they pay us their first month school fees, we will take those first month school fees and we'll credit your account uh, with those first month school fees. And so we currently have some families sitting on seven, eight months worth of credit for their school accounts. Um, and, and it's a wonderful opportunity for a few reasons. Firstly, financially, um, obviously, but for us as COA, we want to grow. Uh, but most significantly for me, the thing that I've seen more than anything else through this referral incentive program is that it grows these hubs organically. If you are referring COA to friends in your area and they're signing up, you automatically have a hub. We don't have to be intentional about it. We don't even have to find out about it. We just let you know, uh, you know, so-and-so signed up and then you start spending time together and that socialization kicks in. And so this is probably the easiest way for us to grow those hubs. So we really encourage you to make use of that. And uh, as you do, just let us know, oh, by the way, I've referred you. Uh, just a mention of our school fees. Our school fees will be increasing for next year. Uh, we have worked really hard to keep our school fee increase well below inflation. Um, inflation for the moment for this year is sitting on around 7.5%, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but we've managed to keep our, our inflation right down to, I think, 3.5% on average across the grades. 
Um, and so here are your school fees for next year. Grade four to nine is 3,050 Rand a month. And grade 10 to 12 is 4,065 Rand a month. And again, that's all inclusive. So that includes your textbooks, uh, particularly for grade 10 to 12. Uh, we have a, a significant uh, textbook purchase for you, which we do on our Snaplify accounts. Um, it includes all of the academic platforms uh, that we tap into, as well as all of the, the, the teacher time and academic support, um, Google Workspace, Learning Path Management, um, IT and dashboards. That's all built into the fee. Um, and then uh, what's excluded, obviously, is the computer and the IT, uh, you know, all of this, the stationary. And then there are some extended curriculum options. Um, you know, if your child is amazing at robotics, we'll put them on a virtual robotics course, but then maybe mention, did you know that there's a world robotics championship that you could sign your child up for independently? Um, so that's the school fees. Uh, and maybe just last comment on this. As you think about school fees, there are two things that I'd like you to bear in mind that I would like you to see as uh, things that you need to save up for. The first is the upgrade of your child's computer. This is something that you need to be quite intentional about because when it sneaks up on you, it's scary. Uh, computers are expensive. And so this is something that you need to be intentional about before a disaster happens on your child's computer, uh, before they drop it or they spill coffee on it or uh, it gets nicked or it just gets slow, um, you know, and starts to give them hassles. Um, at that point, inevitably, one of two things happen if, if we're caught. Um, uh, unawares. The first is we go for the very cheapest option available, and that doesn't always serve our kids well in the online space. Um, the second thing that might happen is I give them my work computer, which is playing up on me. I pass that on to them, and I buy myself a, a new computer. Um, and if it was playing up on me, it's going to you know play up on your child. So really be intentional about your child's device. This is something that can be incredibly liberating or incredibly frustrating. You really want their technology to get out the way. You don't want them to be thinking about their technology, struggling with a slow computer. Um, if you have the resources and the, the, the desk space, get them a second monitor so that they're sitting up, looking straight, not over their computer. That makes a big difference for the kids who have that second monitor. Really invest in their IT if, if they're in the online space. And it makes a world of difference. It really does. And there are smart ways to do this. Um, and then... Uh, 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 finally, that, that basic stationary. We'll talk a little bit more about this. We're going to be a bit more intentional next year about our basic stationary um, in the sense that we're wanting kids to rely a little bit more on handwritten uh, rough notes, mind maps, maths working out in my file. I know where my geography file is. I know where my maths file is. I can show that to my pod teacher. And so we'll be a little bit more strict on that uh, starting from January as well. Okay, and that's pretty much it for me. I'm going to stop presenting here. I saw there were a couple of things in the chat here. Uh, the first one, I'm going to work backwards. Jason says a UPS is also a great addition to the learning space. Spot on. That's a, an excellent point. And this is something that I, I neglected to mention when I was talking about our progression tests. Um, uh, one of the things I love about COA is that it's not... Uh, it's not as essential to stay connected live all the time. You know, parents say to me, uh, what happens if, you know, I lose power or my child's sick? And I say, the bulk of what we're doing is in that underlying coursework. So if they're ahead of the game in that, you know, they'll be able to watch that masterclass afterwards. You know, then it's not going to be four hours of mass, five hours of masterclass that they have to watch to catch up. It's going to be a masterclass and a workshop. But then the rest is their underlying coursework or for our younger kids they're missing pod connect which isn't even an academic delivery moment but with load shedding up to jolly stage six at the moment this has become quite significant for a lot of our families especially during test cycles so for, for term four which is a test term uh, but also just in general for our older grades which which are connecting more regularly online in live lecturing sessions a mini UPS is a great solution. Um, I, I, I really encourage you, you don't have to break the bank on an inverter with, you know, seven life-size batteries and a solar panel on the roof. Uh, what I'm powering at the moment on, on our Wi-Fi is a little box this big. It's called a mini UPS. It plugs straight in between the wall and my Wi-Fi. When my power goes out, my Wi-Fi stays on. I go into the dark. My screen stays on because I'm running on a laptop battery. My Wi-Fi stays on, and I've gone for six hours without uh, any problems uh, yet. Uh, and, and that's probably the most economical uh, 
option at the moment. So if your child has a pretty good battery on their laptop, I'd encourage you to, to check out one of those. Of course, everybody's got slightly different setups with their Wi-Fi and with their computers. Um, so you might need something a little bit more robust, but we really do encourage parents to invest in, in that as well, just to help make the process a little bit more seamless for kids. Uh, let me flick through the rest of these now. Um, Okay, good Good question here about uh, progression tests for people who only started in term three. Will they write progression tests next year then? No. So if your child only joined us in term three, they'll still write the progression tests as they would at any school. Um, the progression tests, remember, are set on the same curriculum that any South African school is working through. So uh, if you joined us, and, and we've got kids joining us in term four, so we're still doing enrollments in, in, in October and we have kids signed up to join us in October, they're coming from other schools or from homeschooling, and they'll have been covering similar content. And so the content will be covered the same, and it'll just be in the form of our engaged tasks. They'll have that whole week leading up to it to go and explore the engaged tasks that they didn't do and see, oh, okay, this is content that I'm you know, familiar with and you know, can work through that. Um, and then uh, they can write their progression tests. Uh, I see your your next comment here from a different country and syllabus, smiley face. <laughs> so what we say to parents who are coming in from a different country, or let's say your child has had uh, a major medical problem and, and couldn't do term two and three um, in a physical school, we still really encourage you to write those progression tests. And what we look at them as, rather than being a grade progression test, we look at them as a benchmarking assessment. And we say, Go ahead and write it you know this may be in a subject or or on content that you've never done before go ahead and write it it's low stakes it's low key this is not going to determine whether you go ahead with your pod or not we're not going to ask you to repeat the year if you you know get 40 percent for geography and um, what we're going to say is okay based on what we see in all of these progression tests this is roughly the level that you're working on so as you progress this is where you need to stay in terms of platforms so what we've done in the past, if a child is you know, really struggling in maths, for example, and joins us in October, doesn't do well in the maths progression test, they carry on with their pod, but they go back and do some work in, on their platform in the previous grades maths, and they can work through that at their own pace. And, and so water is a, a big part of that with me. We sit and we work through all of those. But the thing that we reinforce to the kids is uh, use this as an opportunity to figure out where you are in your learning and let it be an empowering moment and not a gatekeeping, are you going to fail the year moment? Um, that, that's just stress inducing. Okay, uh, where can we find information on the curriculum for year 10 to 12? That's a great question, Sonia. I think, Jason, maybe we need to do a, an info session, particularly for our grade eight and nine parents, do an info session beginning of next term. I'm gonna, I'm gonna unmute Jason here for a second, everyone. Just give me a sec, uh, Jason. There you are. Uh, Jason, uh, maybe a, a parent meeting beginning of next term. I think that's a fantastic idea. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to pop my email address, jason at coeracademy.com, into the chat. You're more than welcome to send me an email. And I'm also happy to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. But yes, Mark, I think maybe a either a parent information session or a co-cost topic. Um, one or the other. So, but definitely worth getting information out there to prep you for what you're in for for the grade 10 to 12 curriculum. Absolutely. Okay. And it looks like we've probably covered most of the conversation. Ah, okay. Great question about where I mentioned Eloise and Sherman A coming on for uh, the languages support. Is there a dedicated maths person? The good news is there is already one dedicated maths person. We've had him since beginning of the year, since January. Um, and we are currently interviewing for a second maths specialist to come and join us, um, particularly to focus on grade seven, eight, nine. So we are we are currently in the process of doubling our, our math support uh, in terms of subject specialists. Um, we are also looking at equipping some of our pod teachers to support our subject specialists in additional teacher time work. Okay. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> There's a relief in that. Thank you. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do at this point, everybody, is I'm going to say thank you and good night because we've reached the hour mark, but I'm going to stay on. So if you have questions, I see more questions popping up in the chat, stay on. And what we'll do is we can have a conversation. You can unmute if you want to ask a question. We can chat a little bit. 
uh, if you have some more thoughts or questions. But I do want to say a big thank you to everybody who came. And uh, obviously, we'll share this with, with all of our teachers and with all of our parents uh, so that you, you can watch through this um, at your own pace. Um, so to all of you who made it live, congratulations to you all. Um, well done. It was good to see you. This It really is nice to connect with you live like this. So thank you very much for spending some time here with us. I'm going to say good night to those of you who want to drop off. You're welcome to stay on if you'd like to chat a bit more. Thanks, everyone.